Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and this episode we have finished the VAB upgrade so we now have a second build slot and boy does it not seem like adding build points to it is worth it initially. Uh, oh my god, it's actually less than 0.01. Uh, yeah, it increases eventually but mm, that costs a lot. I mean that was 150,000 funds down the drain right there to get that many build points. I'm not too sure I like that. Um, I guess just for show we'll get it to 0.1. <laughs> I yeah, uh, this is not good. I don't like that. I why why wouldn't I just put the build points in the first slot anyway and just speed that up? Um, oh, let me see. I mean, because that's 0.06 and this is 0.04, so why don't I just put it at the top? I don't know. Yep, seems like it's weird. Okay, well, uh, find one more there. At least it's now 0.175, which has fewer decimal places, I guess. All right, so we are building another uh, lunar orbit mission, crewed lunar orbit. And I've made some adjustments, like putting the solar panels on their own separate little stage so that we can decouple off the RD-58 stage. Uh, that, that will help. But it's still up to all the engines to actually work, of course. And um, seems like you guys want me to keep test flight in. That's fine. And um, as far as, but I can't really go in and adjust the re reliability of the engines. I'm not gonna <laughs> go through that process. So uh, we'll just take whatever the reliability it is, and we'll keep test flight in, no problems. And we are currently unlocking the R&D building. But basically, the focus for now, until we get it right is to uh, get a Kerbal into lunar orbit and return that Kerbal safely back home. And uh, as I narrow the margins, you know, of course, uh, this new mission, I tighten things up, you know, uh, reduce the blader here and, you know, uh, improve margins there. It increases risks, of course. But uh, I guess I should add an extra one, a backup one in the second build slot to at least get it started. And then uh, I'll meet you out on the launch pad to see how it works. Okay, here we are with Philippe Kerman. We have lined up with the moon. Throttle up, SAS is on. For some reason, we started off with 0.95 waste. I think I made a mistake clicking somewhere in the VAB. Either that or Philippe has been sitting in the pod too long. But in any case, let's just check everything else. Well, we can't. Um, I'm pretty sure I got everything right. We'll see. All right, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. This is Philippe's first mission in this series. We've had a Philippe Kerman before in other series. Okay, looking good through max Q. So one change to this is that the nose is pointier. It's not no longer quite a block up there. That reduced the fairing size. That means we have an untooled nose cone right now, but it's not that expensive. Oh, uh, engine shutdown. Just uh, two core engines now. We got past five G's there. Okay, separation. And the LR-105 is lit. Everything's looking good here. Okay, we are about to make orbit, but uh, we might need some help from the next stage here. I don't know if this is quite going to get us over the line. Uh, close, but not quite. Alright, separation. RCS on. We don't have as much RCS fuel on this stage now. But I think it'll be okay. Extending the panels and antennae. And we actually have to be butt first in order to get any electric charge off of these panels. So let's see. I think... Hmm. I'm just wondering whether I need to ignite this engine. I wasn't really paying attention to the inclination enough, it looks like. Okay, well, let's have MechJeb plot for the moon and see where that happens. Uh, seems like it would happen close to periapsis, so we really need to boost that. All right, all right. Um, we'll have to use an ignition here. I hate to do that, but 
Ignition. Okay. Well, that's one ignition. In theory, we have four left. Okay, let's plot for the moon. Okay, we have our plot and we're turning to the node. So you can see the cone shape in this light a little bit better. And actually the solar panels that are attached to the avionics core, not the best arrangement. It's possible that we do better just having some sort of structural elements and then dumping the avionics core with this stage. But that's what I did for now. Okay, let's see. It says very stable, so ignition. To actually fulfill lunar orbit, we have to ignite this one more time. Okay, let's see what's going to happen here. We really don't want to use a whole lot of RCS to fix this. Okay, a 68 kilometer periapsis, and we're going to aim for an apoapsis of under 500 kilometers is what they wanted. So basically 700 meters per second. We've got 880 on this stage right now. And then we have 900 in with the, we actually have two one kilonewton thrusters now because the burn time was getting a little bit long with just one. And that has 926. Now we've got full MLI on this tank so full insulation and we'll see if we can keep at least 700 meters per second for when we get there. For now uh, we seem to be recharging on the electric charge. Our supplies are fine. We're going to do this node in five days which is less than half of our supplies so that's good too. Well it doesn't look like we've boiled off very much. Oddly, this stage seems to be increasing delta V, which does that mean we had a bad fuel mixture? I'm not entirely sure. Or no, it's because the food, water, and oxygen is being consumed. That's right. Okay, uh, periapsis is 82 kilometers. That's still fine. It's all about the reignition of this engine. Maybe I should have gone around the moon the other way. <laughs> Come to think of it. Uh, details, details. A couple top node. We're getting rid of the nose cone right now. Ignition. Come on, just 34 seconds of goodness here, please. We have made orbit. Okay, 444 by 80. And it reads that that is an acceptable orbit. We have to stay here for 20 hours. So good times. Now we just have to get back. We can use, we can try to reignite this again and use this 158 as well. In addition to what we have up here, that'll help. Um, but yeah, let's hang out for a bit. Let's make sure our electric charge stays happy while we do. Completing this, the next thing we need to do is send some Mars, Mars missions out. We've got a Mars orbit mission and a Mars atmospheric probe mission. Now I've uh, queued up the launch pad upgrade, so we are going to be able to build rockets larger than 350 tons eventually, possibly even before the Mars missions launch. Why this orientation counts as sun up, I don't know, but that's what it is. If you want to point your nose to the sun, it's sun down, and then if you want your tail to the sun, it's sun up. Sun side recharging seems to be fine, and on the nighttime side, we don't even get below 39,000, so we lose like 2% of our power. So if we needed to dump batteries, there's an opportunity there. Nope, we've got an alarm. Okay, 1963 orbital rocketry complete. But if you recall, 
I really didn't care about that very much. <laughs> uh, we we're only doing that so that we can eventually unlock some of the lunar landing technology, especially the Gemini lander engine. Okay, we just need to return home safely now. Okay, the exit burn will take 777 meters per second and the time to get back is about five days which was about the same time that we took to get here. We've been taking a slow road, so, which is fine. That means the heating when we get back will be less as well. I actually missed the first plotted node because I was too busy taking in the sights and thinking about other things. So we will try this again. Okay, uh, that's probably a little bit late, but I want to try, oh no, a node will be fine. I want to try igniting this one more time. Really giving it a workout, finally. Okay, ignition. Nope, it didn't work. Well, shucks. Okay. Um, so we're going to separate that off. And we're going to point retrograde, actually, after enabling all the... Oh god, it's a mess. Okay, I have to make sure not to get rid of that. So, you know what? I'm going to activate the RCS individually. Yep. Okay, we're a little bit late. Let's go. Uh, we took a little bit more fuel than I wanted. And that's a little bit low. Yeah, a little bit tight. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Alright, we are holding that. We're recharging. Looking good. Um, six days of supplies left. And it's four days and 12 hours to periapsis. Okay, time to dump the service. Well, the solar panel module, basically. Off it goes. Right. Looking a little bit awkward right now, but hey, functional. Checking the parachutes. Uh, they seem okay. Alright, well, we will arm them now. We are armed. We have 48 meters per second of RCS. And where are we coming down? South America. Well, I mean, we'll probably land in the South Atlantic, which is not the best place, but it's probably better than the South Pacific, maybe. No, maybe we'll land in South America. We'll see. And descent mode on, obviously. Passing over the Andes. And I'm going to take off pitch control now. Okay, preparing the let's stay at this altitude for a bit maneuver. Executing the let's stay at this altitude for a bit maneuver. Okay, at this point I'm confident we're coming down, so... Let's get some lift again to mitigate G-forces. Okay, seems like we're through the worst of it, though still going pretty fast at this point. And just off the coast of Brazil. Still plenty of ablator left. So there's room to cut that down if we want to. Well, this was definitely a harrowing sort of mission, but it's looking good for completion right now. Okay, we have full parachute deployments, and we're at a very reasonable sort of velocity. Four meters per second, in fact. So, really, really slow. I didn't 
adjust the parachutes this time. So yet another thing we could cut back on if we wanted to, but since we fulfilled the mission, I don't think, and hopefully there's not like a repeat. I hate repeating missions, but you know, if the price is right, I'll do it. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't anticipate having to fix this anymore. We will move on to bigger and better things. Okay, splash down and recover. Spam that recover vessel key or button. All right. Well, looks like it's time to get on with our Mars probes. Philippe got uh, six experience, advanced to level one. Uh, we can verify that a crude lunar orbit contract has been fulfilled and that's that all right so let me get building okay so it turns out that the transfer window i originally had in Kerbal alarm clock wasn't quite right at least not if we are trying to capture into orbit around mars using an insertion burn so i used transfer window planner and found this much quicker transfer uh, while this transfer over here is if we are not doing an insertion burn and we'll use that one for the atmospheric probe. So we've got two missions, Mars orbit and Mars atmospheric probe, and the atmospheric probe we'll send on this one with a heat shield, but we have to use this first one to get into orbit around Mars because we're going to be using an engine to capture. And so what we have in total is 6,553 meters per second required. The initial burn to Mars will be 3,700, and we'll need an additional 2,400 or so to capture. This mission has about 6,553 meters per second plus 9,500 meters per second to get to orbit. So it's pretty tight. There isn't a whole lot to spare here. And we'll see if it works. I decided to name the mission Piper 1 for no apparent reason. That's just the name that popped into my head at the time. So throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. That was quite a delay. These are two H1s. The second stage is an NK-9V, so I of course have built a backup for this mission and uh, we will have Piper 2s. Piper 2s will be the ones with the heat shields and those will be the atmospheric probes that we hope to land. We have parachutes on them too. So if we get, pick up a Mars landing contract within the next 80 or so days, we could do that. After the NK-9V, there is an AJ-10. So yeah, we're using all the best engines, right? I mean, all the ones that have quit on us before. We still haven't got, well, we got 4,000 data units on the NK-9V and also on the AJ-10. Which is weird because we've used the AJ-10 a whole lot more than the NK-9V and somehow it doesn't come out to that many more data units. It's peculiar. I thought about putting SRBs on this, but turns out it's not just the SRB cost, it's the decoupler cost. And each of the decouplers costs about as much as an SRB, at least as much as a Caster 1. And so I went, no, nah, I'll skip that. We'll go with the tight margins. Okay, separation. And... Okay, we've got an NK-9V here. It's got a fairly healthy thrust to weight ratio. These are incidentally balloon tanks. They're just a series of those two meter balloon tanks that we have tooled. The first stage was made up of the Titan 1 second stages. And that was handy because they also have the built in core. But also they have quite a lot of volume for the actual space that they take up. They might be a little bit bigger on the inside, frankly. Okay, fairing set. So our probe has copious solar panelry and one of these dishes, I hope that's going to be enough. I'm going to uh, target Earth right now and activate. We'll have some electric... Oh, we probably could have done with more electric charge, actually. You know what? I I'll reconsider that. Deactivate that. Uh, it doesn't really change much as far as power draw. We'll be dumping a core soon, so... At least there's that. Yeah, I forgot. There's not a whole lot of battery power and all this stuff. 
the procedural cores. Basically, we've got procedural avionics score here, and that's it. That's our power. It's uh, upper stage procedural avionics core, because I still haven't figured out why I need a probe core one. They're expensive and not as not really efficient. Well, it'll be really, really close to orbit, but we're gonna have to finish it off with the AJ-10. Okay. Separation. RCS active. We can coast a bit. Let me get the solar panels out. The AJ-10 stage does not use balloon tanks because, of course, it's pressure fed. Okay, ignition. Ah, oh, it failed already. It failed already. Alright, well, RCS. I don't know what we can do with this. Maybe we'll turn it into... But it's not a very good relay satellite with this particular antenna. Hmm. I think I might dispose of this. Darn AJ-10 mid... Yeah, we'll just let it go. Just as the sun rises. Fortunately, we have some time. I mean, uh, there's this window, but then again, we can assume that there's sort of a continuum between this date and that date. So we basically have like 80 days to launch stuff to Mars. They do have some science on board, obviously, but nothing too great. I mean, the normal instruments, the radiometer, and then on this side, we do have an early television camera. Okay. Once, once again, playing the whole guess the destruction altitude thing. We're not quite there yet. Most of it went at 75 kilometers. And 72 kilometers, 876 is the winner. All right, let's launch another one of these, hopefully with better results. Okay, here we go again. Fortunately, these only take about a day to roll out, incidentally. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. launch. However, once we upgrade the launch pad, the rollout costs are going to go up again. So that's going to be annoying, especially for the smaller rockets. It may be more advantageous to just launch a big rocket with a whole bunch of probes on it, like four different tries for the same thing. I don't know. Depends on the reliability of the engines we're using on the launcher. All right, and separation. First stage was good. Second stage has ignited. And igniting is half the battle. I'll try and dump the fairings a little bit early, fairing set. See if we can make up that little bit of difference that we had before. Sure, extend the solar panels when we're doing 5Gs. That would be good. Well, a little bit better. Okay, throttle down, separation. RCS, RCS on, RCS forward. Forget how much RCS we have on here. Uh, not much. There are actually these tiny little tanks here. These are still tanks for the AJ-10. Or maybe, you know what? Uh, do, I don't want to ignite. Let me see when the plot for Mars will happen and then judge from that. So quickly, Mechjeb, give me your 
best result. Pork chop time. Looks like uh, I got a bad sort of situation. Well, at least I've got a situation where I need to manually plot it, I think. No, oh, and that periapsis is on the wrong side. Okay, all right then. We'll do an ignition of the AJ-10. Hopefully, Mechjeb is wrong and there is an opportunity. It might be beyond the scope of where Mechjeb is looking as far as the time, the travel time is concerned. Okay. Uh, hopefully that's not going to mess things up too much. Huh. If we go straight out... We, I think maybe we can meet it at that ascending node. Maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, we we are well past 4,000 now. Well, I'll plot this, but um, I think perhaps what we need to do is just a mid-course adjustment. Okay, so let's say we used 4,000, let's say 600 to get there. That would leave us with 2,400 or so. Would that be enough to make orbit? That's not feeling particularly great right now. No, that's not good at all. 5,000 it says. Honestly though, everything I try seems to result in a pretty obscene maneuver at uh, periapsis around Mars to actually capture into orbit. I was expecting, well, I mean, Trans Window Planner said something like 2,400. This is 5,000, I mean, it's not even in the same ballpark. And it oughtn't to be that bad. Okay, yeah, it looks like actually we should have just waited 80 days for that second one, uh, that one there. And what we get if we do that is an initial burn of 3,587 meters per second. And then we have to do a correction burn, an inclination adjustment of 800. So we're talking about in total 4,400 something. And then we can capture into orbit. Uh, if we zoom in, come on. We can capture into orbit with 2,400, let's say. So that's a pretty slow approach. You can see it takes us 384 days in total to get there. So 300 days in transit. But because we're going so slow, we don't have as much velocity to burn off once we get there. So yeah, uh, 2,400 plus 4,400 is 6,800, which is still less than what we've got here. And I guess that's what we'll do. The good thing is that the fuels on this are hypergolic. They can stay. And I don't know if that's going to cause problems for the AJ-10, but it's not like it was particularly reliable in the first place. Our only requirement is that the periapsis is below 6,000 kilometers, so that'll be satisfied. And if it's any sort of orbit, that seems to be okay. So, yeah, we will do this. We will, we have an, we're going to have an alarm. And we will do this maneuver, but maybe I should build a different kind of probe with some more delta V margin. And that might be a little bit more helpful. We of course have the two atmospheric ones with the heat shields. In theory, those could get into orbit too. Maybe we should make a more robust mission. I'll think about that. But for now, I'll leave this here and we will wait to do its burn. It's got some communication problems. I should have put the commutatrons on as well. But in any way, uh, 80 days we'll have to wait for this one and we'll build a few more maybe we should do something else in the meantime though i'll think about that so with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time